What's up guys and welcome back to the Concrete Edge right here on Deco Creed TV. My name's Jeff and on today's show we're going to be talking about 10 helpful tips for pouring stamp concrete in hot weather. So stay tuned and you're going to learn all about it. So pouring concrete in hot weather can be a challenge no matter what the situation and things just tend to get magnified when stamping concrete. While the easy answer is to avoid these kind of conditions, man, that is just not always gonna be possible. So here are a few things that we've learned over the years that might help you out. First up is mix design. Now this can be a big deal any time of the year, but hot weather is no exception. While that final mix design needs to be worked out with you and your local ready mix plant, things like mid-range water reducer, or just replacing some of the Portland cement with things like fly ash or slag, man, those will all help you get through those really hot days. Now also talk to your supplier about how their concrete is setting up in hot weather and maybe even ask them if they soak down any of their large aggregates just to keep them cool. Another thing to consider is how far is the plant away from the job site. For those larger jobs on scorching days, maybe even consider going with a different supplier just to minimize time on the road. So next up is retarders. And man, this is one of the biggest things you can do to actually slow down your concrete. There is a catch, however. Putting a retarder in that entire load, man, it's gonna buy you time getting the concrete on the ground, but it's still all gonna set up and be ready to stamp at the same time. And you're gonna have trouble getting consistent impressions throughout the slab. Now to solve this problem, using an on-site retarder gives you the ability to pour out half of that load, then stop, add the retarder, and then keep going. And this is gonna create separation. Now you can stamp that first half as soon as it's ready. And by the time you hit that delayed part, man, I'm telling you, it's like a breath of fresh air. Now on-site retarders can buy you up to an extra hour. And these packs only go for around five or six bucks a yard. And man, that is a small price to pay for even texture throughout the job. So next on the list is have enough help. Now this is where a lot of people go wrong. You know, maybe you underestimated the amount of manpower needed for the job, or sometimes one of the crew just didn't even show up that day. No matter what, being short-handed is pretty much a guaranteed way of having a bad day. Now, if you're using color hardener or cutting borders, man, those are some of the biggest areas that we see contractors underestimate. If you have borders on your job, man, we recommend having one person dedicated to just that. Now, I can still remember the first job that I ever poured with borders, and man, did I underestimate that one. It was what seemed like a small sidewalk, but it had brick borders on both sides and ashlar slate in the middle. And oh yeah, it was an afternoon pour in the middle of summer. We did get the job done and it actually turned out okay, but I learned a big lesson that day. Now, I should have had oh, an extra person on that job or maybe even just waited till the next morning. Color hardener jobs that are larger than 200 square feet, man, you should always have an extra person just to throw that color hardener. You know, maybe even consider having an entire extra person all together for those 90 degree days. Next up is pre-planning your pores. Man, tracking the sun and shade lines, staging all the tools and products, and having the stamps pre-dusted with release and ready to go are all keys to success. Now, one of my first side jobs was for a friend of mine, and I had just been there, you know, in the evenings digging and setting forms, so I had never actually been there in the morning to track the sunlight. Well, I'm telling you, that shade from the house didn't last anywhere as close to as long as I thought I did, and that job did not turn out well at all. In fact, it was one of those that honestly probably should have got torn back out. Another thing is to have plenty of materials on hand. So you remember that sidewalk I told you about earlier? Well, we also ran out of color hardener that day. Now we even had extra figured into the job, but we never counted how many buckets we used on the first two pours, and we must have used more than we thought. My point here is never assume anything and always be planning and paying attention from the time you get on that job to start digging. So the next thing is pour in the morning. Now this is simple, but effective. Now you're always gonna have more time to work with the concrete in the mornings and on those hot days, this is gonna go a long way in creating even texture and your crew is gonna be a lot happier the next day. So another thing is make smaller pours. Man, 800 to 1,000 square feet is just the largest area that we would ever recommend somebody try to stamp at one time. But you might have to scale that back even further on those really hot days. Now, how much that you can pour and stamp at one time is really gonna depend on the size and experience level of your crew. But when the temps are in the 90s, smaller pours are always gonna turn out better. Next up is wetting down the sub base with water. Now, this does a couple things for you. It's gonna keep the moisture from getting sucked out of your concrete and it cools the sub base down. 
another one of those things that won't cost you anything and only takes a few minutes to do. Just be careful, especially when you're using integral color, that you soak everything down evenly so you don't end up with any color inconsistencies. So next up is finishing aid. Man, so have you guys ever had trouble with those annoying little cracks on the surface of your concrete? Yeah, believe me, I have too. And I'm telling you, if you stamp enough concrete, this is going to happen to you. Now, those cracks aren't structural and they can be fixed up later, but using some sort of finishing aid or evaporation retarder is a great way of reducing this problem before it even gets started. And if you're using color hardener, this is a must have on the job site. So save the details for last. In stamp concrete, texture is everything. And sometimes on hot days, the only way of getting good texture is to let some things go until you're done stamping. Now, one of those things that separates high-end stamp concrete contractors from the rest of the pack is texture. Any crew out there can get nice texture on that perfect day, but those real professionals, they do it every single day, no matter what the conditions might be. They understand what needs done right now and what can wait until later. I can't tell you how many times that we have detailed grout lines from a plank, patch blowouts uh, the next day, and maybe even fixed up some discolored areas later never sacrifice texture. Last on the list is stay ahead of it or don't let yourself get behind from the beginning. What I mean by this is that waiting too long to pour, waiting too long to start working on borders and throwing color hardener, or just wasting time on things like trying to figure out how to put the stamps together, all leads to one thing, getting behind before you even start stamping. So have everything ready to go. That way, once that truck shows up, you can focus 100% of your attention on pouring. Make sure you know how to put the stamps together, get the concrete down fast, and make every move count. Well guys, that's pretty much it for today's show. Please let us know your favorite hot pour tips by posting them in the comments right below. If you've enjoyed this video, please let us know by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. And if you're already subscribed, don't forget about that bell icon so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos and it really helps our channel out. So from all of us here at DecoCrete TV, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.